The D3 library includes some very useful functions for working with arrays and getting minimum and maximum values from arrays. Let's take a look at the array at line 12, the data array. Here, we'll get the maximum and minimum values by doing the following. Let's start with the minimum value. On a new line at line 13, I'll type var data min value. And I'll set that equal to D3, so we're calling the D3 library, dot min, and open and close parentheses. So we're using the min method of the D3 library. Now I'll pass the array I want D3 to search through and give me the minimum value. On a new line, I'll type console.log data min value. Head to the browser. I've already got the page open, and I'll refresh and take a look at the console at the bottom. And I have 8 as being the minimum value in the array. I head back to the code. We can quickly scan the array at line 12 and see that indeed 8 is the minimum value. Okay, so just above the console log, I'll type var data max value. And we'll set that equal to d3.max. And we'll pass in the array again. Now, on the console statement, I'll type comma data max value. Save it and head to the web page, refresh. And now we have 8 as the minimum value and 337 as the maximum. Now, what if you wanted both? You might think, okay, I have to set a variable for both, store them both, and then use both variables in a new array. Well, actually, D3 has a method that does that for you. We'll head back to Sublime Text, and underneath data max val, we will type var data low high value, and we'll set that equal to d3.extent and pass in data. So the extent method will look through a collection of numbers and then return the lowest number in an array where it is the first index and the highest number where it is the second index. So go to the console statement and type comma data low high value. Save it. Let's create a new line, a little easier to read. Go to Chrome and refresh. And now you can see it's represented by bracket notation where the first index is the low value, the second index is the high value. So you'd use bracket notation to access it. So how do we get data from arrays that have objects? We can't simply use d3.min and pass the array because the min, max, and extent methods don't know what property to look at. So let's look at the donuts array. It's got a bunch of objects contained within, and the objects all have either a key property or a value property. So we'll create some code that will let us search through the value property and return the greatest and least values in that array. So let's start by typing var donuts min value and set that equal to d3.min. And for the first argument, we'll pass in the donuts array. Now this by itself isn't going to do anything meaningful. For the second argument, we're going to create what we call an accessor function. And this is a function that will help d3 to understand how do we look at the information in the array. So function, open and close parentheses, and open and close curly brackets. For the argument, we'll use the letter D. D will stand for the individual piece of data. Now, within the function, we'll type return d.value. So this is telling D3, look, when you get to this item, D, look at the value property of that item, which is lines 19 and so on. And you can see the sublime text is highlighting all of those value properties. Okay, so let's copy line 16 and paste it beneath line 34. I'm going to get rid of the second and third arguments. We'll get to those eventually. Copy donuts min value and paste it here. Now head to the browser and refresh, and there it is, 8. Let's go back to the code, and I'll comment out line 16 so we don't get confused. Let's copy lines 32 through 34 and paste it and change min to max. And again, we're going to look at the value property of each of the items. Now in the console log, donuts max value, save it, head to the browser and refresh, and there it is, 337. And finally, just as you would expect, we can do the same for extent. So I'll copy what we just pasted, paste it, and donuts low high value. Change max to extent. And again, we're looking at the value property. And then we'll log out as the third argument, donuts low high value, save it, head to the browser and refresh. And there it is as an array with the first item being the lowest value and the second item being the highest value. 
we'll use this pretty quickly within D3 because it's pretty critical for finding out domains of data. And we'll use that when we draw information that can scale according to size of the web page.